Good morning. I turned up my sound today because it wasn't doing well. This is Marketing Moments. If I can turn that on, hold on. Marketing Moments. And today I'm going to be talking about social media and psychology hacks. So online psychology hacks that you can use in your social media. I thought it was a really fun topic. Let me just get out of here. Woo! Plan with video, right? So yeah. Uh, today I am talking about online psychology hacks. If you don't know me, my name is Pip. I run a digital marketing agency over on Vancouver Island and we focus on search and social marketing. So I get on here every Sunday and talk about something I love. Today I'm talking about psychology because I studied psychology for four years in university and it is one of my loves. It is so interesting. So I've taken some of the information from that and from uh, other things I've learned and I brought it all together and I thought I'd just do a little live and talk about it. So maybe I'll take off the little that and just get right down to it. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about strategies you can use to improve your marketing. And the article's going to, well, the article that I am publishing is going to dig into some what psycholo psychological factors are, two things that happen on social media, names and faces, Murphy's Law, Number Rules, Persuasion Techniques, and Body Language. I'm going to run through it quick, but it's going to be fun. So let me just look around, see if I can see myself online. If you're joining me this morning, tell me what you're doing today, because I, I would love to know. I am going to visit my mother, and we're going to have tea. She's British, and we do tea. And so I'll be going to visit her, and then I'm going to be getting some boxes and stuff like that, because we're moving. So I have found my video, yay, and I'm going to get right into it. Okay, the first thing is, um, what are psycholo psychological factors? I have a little thing here. So we're not just talking about what works online, we're talking about what people are predispositioned for. And this is kind of something that makes all the difference. Hold on, let me just add my Ooh. Bang, bang. So just quiet that down. Anyway, so we're not just talking about things that we can hack to make our stuff better online. We're talking about things that are naturally we're predisposed to. And those things can really affect how we do things online. So there are two things that happen when we go online. We want connection and we seek out connection and we seek out entertainment. So there's this kind of, there's a reason why we jump online. And if we're going to get right into it, we want to talk about how you're engaged and how you can engage people to do better, right? So, okay. So, names and faces. So, we are predisposed to pick up names. Um, that's why, you know, when you do a live and you say somebody's name, it has an effect, uh, usually a really good positive effect. So, always say names. Names are really good. Right? Don't necessarily talk in third person. First person seems to be really effective. Uh, faces. Well, let's talk about faces. Faces work online. So showing your face. Uh, we all know that when people have their little profile image as a cartoon, it can be effective, but it's not always the most effective because people want to get to know you. They want to know who they're talking to, who's talking to them, right? So also, Faces, do you ever go out and walk around and like, I know when I look at rocks, maybe this will sound weird, but I see name or I see faces, you know, or you make faces. We are predisposed to seek out faces. And, and so we see faces and things. So that, that is because I think we want that connection, right? We're looking uh, for recognition. So always using faces online really works well. Images with you in them are cool and helpful, right? So there's the name and faces thing. Now let's get into Miller's Law. So Miller's Law is, it's also called uh, the rule of plus or minus seven. So it's about grouping things. We as humans can only remember so much. And in order to remember a lot more information, if we chunk things or group them into categories, that can really help us with our memory. So if we're helping, people online or we're trying to teach people online, if we group things into segments or we group things like for me, I mean, this, this, this little talk has uh, five things, right? Plus or minus two, 
So interesting, right? So the seven, the plus or minus seven rule kind of relates to getting online and, and grouping what you're talking about in bite-sized chunks. And that's how we learn best. So if you're looking to teach people online, the best way they can help remember things for themselves is to chunk things, right? So when I was in university, this is how I memorized stuff. I mean, I wasn't the A-plus student I could have been today, but I, um, you would chunk information uh, into the categories so you could list off all those things you needed to list off. So if we actually use that in our online marketing, when we're teaching or writing a blog post, that can really affect you know, people ingesting our content. So that's Miller's Law. Now there's number rules. The number rules are pretty interesting. I know you guys see it all the time, the 99 cents, things like that. So there's a couple of effects that are pretty neat. I'm just gonna, um, the psychology of pricing, right? So 99, we have a tendency to look at numbers as a whole. So if you price something at 799, oftentimes if you actually are talking to somebody and you, you recognize that you say the price of that thing, usually you say seven. You don't say the 799. And we use nines because it's closer to round numbers. So the less we confuse people, the better off we are. And yeah, people are rounding down. So that's the kind of pricing rule. There's uh, the 99 and the left digit effect. So that's the same thing as seven goes to, 799 goes to seven. We just round from the main number over, over to the left digit. There was one more. One more I had that was pretty interesting, but oh, dollar signs have an effect, font size has an effect. It's really interesting when you dig right into it, how we interpret and do things online, it's kinda cool. So now I'm gonna get into the persuasion. Persuasion, we're seeing this all over the place online. We've been seeing it for years. It's, there's reciprocity. So when we, when we give somebody something, they feel obligated to reciprocate. So say you give them a easy, ingestible, downloadable PDF of something that they can learn. They're gonna take that and they're eventually gonna be more likely to potentially buy your products or services. And that's why people are doing it. It's to grow um, your ability to communicate and connect with people. But the, the recept, recip, it's really hard to say, reciprocity um, is a big thing online. And we see this in our daily lives. Like for instance, when I was in school, one of the things we learned was in a political environment, if you say okay to putting a sign on your front lawn supporting one of the people, you are more likely to, when asked to canvas for that group, to do it. So it's these little tiny things. There's also the foot in the door, which is a lot about, hey, I give you something and now I feel obligated to like you or do more or, yeah. So it's also called foot in the door. There's a lot of, there's a lot of other persuasion techniques. Uh, a lot of people use like NLP and things like that, which is neuro linguistic programming. So if you're ever in a job interview, one awesome thing to say is, uh, is we. So if you really want the job, just say, well, we get to start working on that, things like that. So you're doing an inclusion thing. There's these little tiny, tiny things, right? That can work really well online. It's kind of fun. Again, wait for it, hold on. Ah, this is online psychology hacks. And so the last, I think number five, the last thing I'm gonna get into is body psychology, body and psychology. So I do lives every week and I'm not gonna lie, I get nervous every time, every time. And I'm more prepared now than I've ever been before. I'm doing um, you know, my content calendar, I'm writing a blog post. So a blog post will be published right after this that'll go into this detail. There'll probably be some things in there that aren't in the talk, there's probably gonna be some things in the talk that aren't in the blog post, which makes it more fun. But why I bring up doing the lives is because, and why I bring up getting nervous is because uh, there's two systems in your body. One is called the parasympathetic and one is called the sympathetic. And you can't have one working when the other is not. So if you have animals, you'll know this, like when they're really stressed out, they won't eat. So, which keeps them stressed out. If you actually got them to eat, the other part of your body would start reacting and then they would chill out. So the parasympathetic is, um, it's like the flight or flight, 
fight or flight. So we have two systems in the body and it's about where the blood flow goes. So blood flow goes to your extremities when you're stressed because you got that fight or flight and when you're calming down blood flow or when you eat things like that, blood flow goes to your internal organs, which calms you down because it's not focused on the fight or flight. So if you get nervous about something often, like say you have to do a speech, 15 minutes, 30 minutes before eat something, it'll kind of change the blood flow of your body and that will get you to kind of chill out and you'll be able to do it better versus getting all like, you know, stressed. So that is something I do for myself and I still utilize it. I was doing it when I was writing exams and it really helped because I, I get nervous. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, okay. The conclusion where to start. So start slow, like usual, try something, add something else later. Try these little techniques. I don't know. Do you have a downloadable thing? Have you done a live? Uh, put your face on things, say people's names when you go live. You know, little things like this can really help us manage our marketing. Like if we actually pair psychology and marketing, we can do things better to help people understand us. There's all sorts of other things you can do too. Like there's a mimicking effect. These, this just touches the surface of some things we can do uh, that we can learn from psychology and implement to our online behavior. Makes a world of difference, right? So this was online psychology hacks, totally psychology, social media, and psychology. Super fun topic. One of my favorites probably, so I'm gonna love this. I got some resources on my blog post, which are available for reading, and my blog post is there and edited, so if you see any mistakes, let me know, because I'm working on that, I'm working on that. And next week, I'm talking about time management and marketing. I know something we all struggle with and something I've heard people who've joined the group say, um, in our questions that we ask is one of the things they have a hard time with is how to manage your time and how to get it all done. I'm going to share what I do. It's fun. It's, you know, interesting in my opinion, and maybe it will help you. So join me next week, 11 AM right here on my business page. I love talking about this stuff. Uh, we have big plans, fun things we're doing. If you have feedback or you know of a hack, or a psychology thing that I didn't mention, pop it in the comments. I would love, love, love to have a discussion about this because it's one of my favorite things. Okay, have a fabulous day and I hope to see you next week. Bye.